cycling. I could do them. Um, I could figure out all those things with science. But uh, what I can't do with science, what nobody can do with science, is prove that it's wrong <laughs> to kill babies. Uh, but we can logically make an argument, a very rational argument, that it's, like I said, it would be wrong to drive a nail into the head of a normal, sentient 10-year-old for no reason, to accomplish no end, just to do it for the sake of doing it. We can say that would be wrong, stupid, moronic, inefficient, unproductive, fucktarded, insane, uh, inefficient, dysfunctional, retarded, uh, you know. I mean, what is abortion? Is killing uh, a, an egg? Is killing a tree? Killing is another tricky word. I mean, the life word is tricky because what are you talking about? There's two kinds of life. There's trees and there's sentient beings. So calling them all one thing is stupid. Killing is another tricky word. Uh, yeah, ending its its um, um, what's the right word for it? Its animation as a consuming and reproducing bit of chemi chemical complexity. Yes, ending that. Um, but we could kill a virus. We could kill a microbe. We could wipe out smallpox. We could kill smallpox. Well, that would be a good thing to do, wouldn't it? This is just a blight. It's a parasite. It's, it's, uh, it doesn't produce anything good. And I'm just arguing that if we really examine what we're doing here, we're just another, we're just another parasite. And we're not doing anything good. Fetus. That fetus, if left unkilled, will turn into a baby. Is that not killing babies? Logically? Yeah. Again, I, if you're going to argue my philosophy, then you ought, ought to argue its core, which isn't too damn concerned about killing. It's concerned about the welfare, quality of life, not quantity of life. I don't give a fuck about this killing equation as much as I give a fuck about the um, how you get there, <laughs> you know, uh, how it lives, how it exists, what happens to it while it's alive. I don't, you know, whether or not how long it lives it really isn't terribly relevant. And God damn, this is going to be a pain in the ass to edit. Fuck. What if we wait until the baby grows into an adult and then kill it? Then is it still wrong? Because it's not a baby anymore. It's an adult now. Is it not wrong to kill adults? Uh -huh. Yeah, well, it's not wrong to kill. Like I said, if you go back in time and you could kill Adolf Hitler when he's 10, it's probably going to be a good idea to do it, even if you had to do it in some horrible manner. It would probably work out for the human race in the end. Can't say for sure, but the odds are it would. Um, so, yeah, but, but again, it's not about this stupid... And, and there's also the social contract. So, I mean, we can't talk about the what, what is an absolute right and wrong thing to do when we have to concede that there's some rules that are imposed by the social contract where we aren't allowed to act because we've made an agreement with each other that even if we think each other's an asshole, we're not allowed to kill each other. But it doesn't have anything to do with whether or not it's true that somebody could deserve killing. They could need killing. It just means that, well, if we let everybody decide who needs killing, then we know what happens. We, you know, a bunch of people start hanging from trees, and it's no good. Well, we have wrong to kill. Why is it wrong to kill? Because it will cause something to suffer. No, well, what if the baby is suffering? I saw this terrible, terrible woman. Uh, it's just a terrible human being on TV where... Yeah, why don't you laugh about it? I mean, it's just kind of funny that you laugh. Ah! You know, and then you, but you're not going to laugh about this, and it's just kind of funny. For a kid, it was like an adult. He was a teenager, and he had, like, no arms and no legs or whatever, you know. He might as well have not had any. He was, he was constantly drooling and screaming in agony all night long. And, um... <coughs> she said, flippantly, casually, this, uh, my previous six babies died a few, within a few days of being born. And I was thinking, wait a minute. She knew she had some genetic fuck-up that would make her child's life a horror story. And she still had the kids. Now that sickened me. Good, I'm glad. Um, and it should. And so that we can agree on something. Um, but it happens every fucking day. And by a bunch of people who just keep saying, the only thing that matters is it's a really nice day today and it's a blue sky. And so that's all that matters. So as long as I can appreciate that, it doesn't matter whether, you know, I have no arms and legs or whether I have claws for hands. They'll make excuses for all of it. They'll justify, um, like I said, it doesn't matter. Let's have a holocaust. Let's kill four or five billion human beings. And the survivors will all say, yeah, but it's a beautiful day. You, you know, the, the burning bodies are creating such a nice glow, uh, or, you know, especially around twilight. It's such a beautiful glow in the sky from all the burning bodies. <laughs> you know, they'll find some way to turn it into a, they'll, they'll gild that fucking lily forever. And it's not a lily. It's a piece of cat shit but they're going to bronze it and gild it and gold plate it and put diamonds on it and they're just going to keep putting your, 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 your artificial 
crap on top of it and keep trying to say you're doing something and you're not doing a goddamn thing. You're just a stupid desire machine, period. You're a little bit of a Frankenstein monster flopping around on planet Earth and, and you think you're accomplishing something to justify the suffering of that kid. Unfucking believable I still hit the wrong button again. It uh. sickened me, okay? Um, it, it touched parts of me that are related to my experiences of suffering, just like it does to any other human being. Because the subject suffers. The subject knows what suffering is. And the subject can tell what suffering is just by looking at something else suffering. Oh, again, nice. you're going to keep trying to make it the subject, subject, subject. Exactly. The subject has personal experience, and they gain knowledge through that per personal experience, and then they can make judgments because they're now knowledgeable. But you'll deny us that faculty if we're judging the universe or we're judging some inanimate thing. We're not allowed to use that personal cheat because we've actually experienced the suffering. We've actually experienced the sentience, so we can now make judgments, and you won't allow us to, to do that. And you'll assume that, um, well, I don't even know how to put this, but there, there, the problem, there's a problem here, too, where you know, it could just be that you just quite haven't had enough yet. You haven't been bitten hard enough by life. So maybe you don't really know what suffering is. I mean, I, I've made the argument before that I didn't really know it for sure. I mean, I didn't know it as hard as I know it now until I was about 30 years old and I had some stuff happen. I said, oh, shit, this is a whole new level. I, I didn't realize pain could go where pain was going. And uh, there was enlightening. And uh, it certainly did change my perception because I realized there was this possibility that was twice as big as I thought the possibility was. And uh, so that's sort of the trick of it too, though, is that we are informed by our sentience, but if we don't really, sometimes you gotta, you gotta experience to really know it. And maybe some people just haven't experienced enough of it to get a good enough taste of it to know what the fuck they're committing some poor sucker to. It's called subjectivity, okay? And from a moral perspective, from my morals that emanate from my brain subjectively, Again, subjectively. So you get your morality by cuteness and bigotries and personal, I like chocolate. That's how you're defining your values, by some stupid subjective notion. No, I don't think so. And even if when you attach it to culture and history, where did they get their values from? Well, they did do some rational equations there. Obviously, their rationale was perverted by nonsense, like a god or some other crap that distorted their perception. But they were attempting to do some sort of rational evaluation. And you goddamn know it. It's through rational evaluation that we've stepped over the stupid elements of our value equation. We realize that animals aren't just food. A lot of us have. We realize that certain races of people were not subhuman. We realize that women are not you know, subhuman. Uh, these are things that people, they actually caught on. They figured it out because they had to get rational. And I'm just saying when we eventually get rational about what a human being is, um, yeah, it's not going to be fun because the conclusion is going to be that, yeah, they're, we're just one of, the, we're one of the parasites. I can see that woman is a fucking bitch for dating to have children, for putting something through that agony and that stuff. Right, and so you can make that judgment about her subjectively, you say. You didn't use rational logic. You didn't say, okay, I know that this is way out of balance pain equation. The, 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 the price he's paying is just too high for any potential good. Um, and and that's not a, it wasn't a rational evaluation, you're saying. No, you did that subjectively. And so that gives you permission now to say that, oh, yeah, and the rest is all subjective too. So when I say somebody else's life is worth living, it's, you know, it's, but it's subjective. I mean, it's just crap. It, it's, it's just... You have to apply logic relative to the suffering of just normal life. Like, you have to walk fucking eight miles and have a broken bike and be fucking poor. That's shit as well. But, you know, I can cope with that. I, I choose to cope with it. Yeah, this word choose is interesting. You know, like a salmon chooses to swim upstream and live, spawn and die. <laughs> you know, it's not choosing. It's being obedient to his nature. Being obedient to, to the compulsions that, that are running through his bloodstream. So let's admit that we don't make... The, the choice is not... Uh, a purely objective, sensible, rational choice. No, it's a choice completely lost in, in emotions and desires and drives and perceptions of, of incompleteness or unfinishedness or desperation or you know, all kinds of bullshit. And, but it has nothing to do with a rational choice. It's not a free choice. We are bound to our, by our biology, by our psychology. Okay, I choose to exist. No fucker on the internet can tell me that I, I do not have the right to exist, <laughs> well, or though I, I should be destroyed because I... Mm, well, sure, they have a right to say it. They don't have a right to do it, but they certainly have a right to say it. 
They have a right to say your existence is futile and stupid. <laughs> of course they do. Just like you had a right to say uh, the woman who would have a kid with no arms and legs who's drooling on himself in constant pain uh, had no right to do that, had no right to impose that life. Um, yeah, with the same freedom that you have to judge her, I have a right to judge you. There's no, there's no law.